Bees and love my friends, welcome to my channel. I am Lara B and today I'm going to talk to you about how to distinguish compost, soil and potting mix. Let's go. So this idea for this video came from something I said in the last video, which was that I would always suggest a beginner, especially if you don't have a garden, to start with potting mix. And I feel like this might be a bit confusing for some because when you go to the garden centre, you see so many different types of soil and potting mix and compost. And I get that it can be a bit daunting for people who don't really know what they are, what the difference are, and maybe you just go for the cheapest thing and that's all right, that's perfectly fine. But I just wanted to tell you the pros and cons of using each of these different types of soil. So they look all very similar to the eye and I can understand, in the, especially in the big bags they come in usually, they just look all the same. But you can really tell the difference if you know how to distinguish them and they have very different properties and then they can actually make or break your garden or your plants. So I'm just going to show you in my experience what the best thing is to do. So let's start with soil. So soil is what the earth is made. It's the outermost layer of our planet. And there are over 70,000 different types of soil actually. So they're just so diverse and it's such a generic term that it's very hard to say what it is and what its characteristics are. But we have to remember that usually it's a mix of sand, clay and rock, along with small amounts of organic matter. And while it definitely has a lot of the grit and the rockiness that the plants do need to grow and to develop a solid root system, it's still very important to have nutrients and oftentimes this is something that soil might be lacking a little bit. So when you see the bags of soil at the garden centre, usually what they're used for is to cover gardens or to mix in to create a bulk material that you can grow plants in. But it doesn't really add any nutrients or anything. So it's very important that you steer away from it if you're just starting out and especially if you're using pots. So the positives of using soil are that it's completely very inexpensive and also it's you can get it for free or you can buy it but it's so cheap if you buy it. And it has a lot of grit, um, which is very good for root systems to grow. But the negative thing is that it doesn't have enough nutrients. And especially if you're using pots, it's very important to have a complete nutrient profile in order for your plants to flourish. So now let's move on to potting mix. Potting mix is usually a mix of peat moss, tree bark, and some perlite or vermiculite or some mineral aggregates that help retain moisture. So the main benefit of using potting mix is that it contains these mineral aggregates such as perlite, vermiculite, calcinated clay or sand. And these help water retention, water spreading and avoiding stagnation. Especially perlite and vermiculite are volcanic rocks so they're very porous and airy. So once you water the plant, these rocks will absorb some of the water and help spread it throughout the whole volume of the soil. And this is why it's super important because one of the main causes of plant death is root rot. And this happens when you overwater plants or when there is not enough circulation of the water within this pot. Another great benefit of using vermiculite in the potting mix is that it does contain some magnesium and potassium, which are really, really good for your plant. Aside from these mineral aggregates, potting mix usually contains other ingredients that help it retain moisture usually peat moss, sphagnum moss or coir. Commercial mixes usually also contain either sawdust or some degree of chopped wood or chopped bark and this is also really good for water retention. So the main benefits of using potting mix are that it's a complete product that is thought for people to just put in their pots and go with it. It's usually fertile, it retains water really well, and it's just really easy to use, even though it is a bit more expensive than just natural soil. So bear in mind that your potting mix will be depleted of its nutrients after a while of you using it and plants absorbing them. So this is when compost comes in really handy. Compost is the product of the interaction between microorganisms, the oxygen in the air, and brown material, green material, and kitchen waste. 
Now you can have different types of compost again, you can have vermicompost, you can have um, a compost heap and these all have slightly different processes and slightly different effects and if you want I can cover all of that in another video. In fact here at my mum's house in Italy because I have a garden I use a compost heap and it's so good because you can just chuck everything in it and it will just produce fresh compost and it's just super super fertile super useful in the garden you can have tons of it and you can just fertilize everything um yeah so usually when you put things in the in the compost bin it can be either um garden waste kitchen waste or any leaves anything you that comes from the garden that is green organic material you can just put it in the compost bin and there are some worms in there, some microorganisms, and it will just all work together to create this really lovely dark mix that is compost. Whereas at, when I'm at uni uh, and I don't have a garden, or at least I don't have a very big one, I live in a flat um, at university, and I use worms. I create my own vermicomposts. So I have a worm bin and I put my kitchen waste in there, um, just tiny bits, like not a lot of it. Um, and the worms will eat it and process it and create vermicompost. This is just a very clean and easy solution that doesn't smell at all and it produces really nice pure quality compost fertilizer that then I use to fertilize my plants at university. Now this is a whole other story and if you want me to talk about it I will, I will create a video about it especially, in fact I feel like especially when I'm going to start my worm bin again next year I'm maybe going to make a video about it so you can do it as well in your own house. So yeah, the main benefits of compost are that it's cheap to make, um, it reduces your waste, it's so good for the soil, and it just creates a really good natural environment full of nutrients. Oh, it's very windy now. <laughs> um, wow, super windy. Yeah, full of nutrients that will boost the productivity of your garden or of your pots in your house. Unfortunately, compost lacks a lot of the grit and just the structure that usual potting mix or soil has because it doesn't have any sand, any rocks or anything that the roots can actually cling on to. So I don't think it's a very good idea to grow directly in compost. It can be done, but depending on the plant you want to grow, it's just a bit different. And I feel like the best thing to do is to either get potting mix and then fertilize it with some compost or some liquid fertilizer as you go or create your own potting mix um, by combining different ingredients such as soil pot and, and compost and other minerals. Now if you want me to do that also as usual comment down below let me know if you want to know how to make your own potting mix it's going to be super cheap super easy and super fun and I'm really excited to make it with you if it's something you want to see. So now I've prepared a little experiment that we can try together and we can see whether we can grow a plant in compost, in potting mix and in garden soil and which will be the best. So I have three pots here. I have one pot of compost. This is compost from my compost heap. One pot of potting mix. This is a bit of a broken pot but we don't throw away anything. Um, and it's still very good, it's, it still has the structure, it's still very good to grow. So here we have potting mix that I bought from a garden centre. And here we have some, just some plain soil from my garden. And now I'm going to try and plant the same plant in all three containers and see which grows the best. So as you can see, I have compost here and you can see it still has a bit of the residues of leaves and materials but it's still very very dark and soily. Here we have potting mix which I bought and it's you see you have here the wood chip and you have the perlite these kind of these white um, balls are the perlite and here we have my garden soil it's quite dry actually I'm gonna have to water it a, a fair amount but you see it's a lot more compact, it's a lot less porous and it's a lot more dry as well. So you see I've now added a bit more um, soil in here just because I feel it was not enough and I've also added some water and you see it's very clay um, and it doesn't have enough air in it whereas this is kind of like 
a lot looser and also this you see it's, it's very loose compared to the soil but we can't tell whether this is better than this one or this one we have to plant some plants so now i'm going to plant some cucumber and i have here cucumber um so i'm just going to yeah see which one grows best so now i'm going to go and plant some cucumber seeds in all three mixes my cucumber seeds and we're going to plant them pointy side up so you see they have a pointy side and this wants to go up because this is where the leaves are going to come from and i'm just going to press a few in the soil or the well this is the compost pointy side up pointy side up pointy side up and one more pointy side up. i plant a lot just because we want to make sure we have some growth then just pat them and there we have it now we're going to move on to our potting mix So now I have my watering can and I'm just going to go with a small serving of water for each pot. This is the first watering I give so it's going to soak all the way through. You can really see how this is muddy. Can you just tell how this is a lot muddier whereas these absorb water in a completely different way. But hey, we'll have to wait and see. So now I've positioned them on the ground. Now obviously I do everything as much as I can in the garden just because I have this outside space but you don't have to have it and you can do this inside as well as outside if you want to grow your own cucumbers or any other plant. Remember you don't need a garden to do a gardening. But here we have our compost, our potting mix and our garden soil. I'm going to leave them here and I'm going to keep you updated to see how these grow. So it's a different day today and I just want to show you a little experiment that I'm doing to find out my soil composition. It's super easy and it's like a DNA test for your soil and I'm really excited to discover what my soil composition is. What you need is a jar and it just can be a mason jar that this is a honey jar but anything will do and um, I'm going to have two samples just because I want to test my garden soil and my a vegetable patch soil just because I think they might have slightly different compositions so follow me and I'm going to show you how to do it. So now I have my jar and I'm going to take a sample from the soil. Now it's very dry so I'm just going to dig a little bit so we don't get the surface layer and then I'm going to just move it to the side, oops, move it to the side and then I'm going to just dig my sample of soil and put it in the mason jar. We don't need too much, but just an amount that we'll be able to test. So I think about this much should be fine. I suck in the mason jar and I'm going to fill it with soil from my vegetable patch. The reason why I'm doing two different samples is because this soil has been used for many, many years to grow plants and I've also composted it, so I expect the composition to be slightly different. So I'm just going to remove my mulch and dig a little bit so that I don't get the immediate surface layer and then loosen the soil and take a sample. Oh this is a lot darker and a lot more moist but let's see if it's going to be actually different composition or if it just looks different. There we go. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to fill each of these jars with some water and some detergent. I'm using dish detergent but you can use whatever kind of detergent you have. Um, so I'm just going to fill them with water a little bit and then add a little bit of detergent to each. Oh, this is bubbling, this is so dry. I would say about a tablespoon of detergent 
per mason jar. Now I'm going to keep filling them with water up to the top or up to say three quarters. And now I'm going to seal them, make sure they're nice and sealed. And shake. And what the detergent will do is it will help us separate the different layers of the soil. So the heavier layers will go to the bottom and the lighter layers will go to the top. And the second one, this is our, this is our garden, um, vegetable garden soil. Need to get that exercise in. There we go. You can see it's already kind of starting to separate and soon we will be able to tell our soil composition. So you can see they are already starting to layer but we're going to wait for 24 hours and then I'll come back to you and show you what's happened. So it's the following day today, 24 hours have passed, and you can definitely see our soil has started to layer. So we have a top layer, which is a light, tiny, fine layer, which is the clay, followed by a layer of silt and then a layer of sand. Now I'm going to measure them with a ruler and we're going to see our soil composition. So I've done the measurements and then I calculated the percentages of the different parts of the soil. Now I've put here a chart where you can actually see, depending on the percentages of the different parts of the soil, which kind of soil you have. So for example, my garden soil is silt loam because it has approximately 4% clay, 26% sand and 70% silt. Whereas my vegetable patch soil is loam because it has approximately 6% clay, 40% sand and 54% silt. Now I'm really happy because these are great soils to grow in and you just need to add a bit of compost as a fertilizer because as I said um, you need some extra fertilization and just water frequently because the water retention isn't great but these soils are so good for growing and I'm just really really happy. I really hope you enjoyed this video. This is my second video so far, so I'm still learning. And if you have any constructive criticism, as usual, just comment down below. Let me know what you think, anything you enjoyed about this video. Also very useful for me to know, just to know what you want to see in the next videos. But yeah, um, this is all from me. I'm Lara B. Bees and love.